I want this to be an interactive. I would. Um, Ross, sorry, do you mind if I record? I mean, is it not, not at all, not at all. Okay, so um, so yeah, Hussein has. Uh, um, hi there, Yasmin. It's great to have you on. And uh, yeah, so if you if you want to share your, uh, you know, your um, uh, if, you, if you, your video, it's fine. If you if you don't want to, it's no problem at all. But. Uh, um, uh, I would prefer it if if we could uh, do it that way. That would be wonderful. Okay, so so now uh, um, Hussein has asked me to to have a chat with you guys about um, the financial markets and about how to benefit from the stock exchange. And and what I'd like to have is a little bit of interaction, uh, if that's okay with you. Um, if you would uh, tell me if uh, you know you could either. Uh, unmute your mic and tell me or you can uh, put it in the chat room i want to just know if anybody here has had experience with trading or would you say that you're new to trading um so i'm new to trading i don't have any experience with trading okay yes mean you're new to trading that's fine mm -hmm. um and Okay, VSO double seven CS one S iPhone says I'm still a beginner. Beginner, sorry, I didn't get your name. I think you said it's Z or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's Z. Um, hello, Z. Sorry about that. Um, all right, and then um, Simone says I'm basically new. Okay, when you say you're basically new, uh, it it would indicate to me that you might have a little bit of experience. But I'm going to pretend that you all know very little, if that's okay. Because most of, most of you know most of uh, the people I teach are people that are brand new to the uh, to the stock market, and uh, so I'm going to uh, you know repeat a little bit about uh, of what Hussein uh, said uh, about me. I'm just going to introduce myself, and then we'll go into the the meat of what I want to uh, share with you this evening. Now and and thank you very much for joining and taking the time out to to um, listen to us, uh, to to me and uh, and find out about more about the stock market. Now, just uh, very briefly, I originate from the Eastern Cape. Actually, I come from a farming family. I was actually born in a little town called Maltino, where they still make Omar rusks. Can you believe it? You've seen Omar rusks on the shelf. And that's the only place in the country. It started there, and they still only make them there. They don't make them in Joburg or anything like that. They make them there because the climate's very good and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, that's where I grew up. And, um, yeah, I grew up as a, far, a, a kid on the farm. So I used to play with the little kids on the farm. So I'm a, I'm a true poza. Um, So I always uh, have fun with the, with the poza people. But, anyway... Um, uh, I went to boarding school in Queenstown, and uh, well, just to start in my career, I, you know, I've been around the block a bit, uh, but uh, I'll start off here. I, I worked for Goldfields in the Human Resources Department. Uh, I did very, very well. I started there very young, <clears throat> uh, at about 24, and about, by the age of 26, I was Human Resources Manager of one of the mines. So I was doing exceptionally well, but I really always wanted to be in my own business. I wanted to be in a business of my own. And uh, so I left the mines and uh, together with the partner, I bought an existing uh, business, uh, which had been very successful. But uh, so we thought, okay, this is fantastic. So we bought a, a running business, but unfortunately it didn't turn out well. And uh, so my first sort of business experience didn't turn out all that well. And so um, I moved back to the Eastern Cape where my wife and I ran a small business ourselves. And that uh, went a lot better. But uh, during that time, I was studying to enter the ministry, actually. And, I, and, uh, and we went in, uh, we moved to Barclay East. Now, uh, Barclay East, if you think of the map, it's uh, and and you the Lesotho is a circle on the map. Now, Barclay East is in the Eastern Cape, but it's just below the uh, Lesotho border on the southern tip of the Drakensberg. Beautiful area, um, you know, in the, in the mountains and so on. It's right near the only ski resort in, in South Africa called Tiffendale. And uh, we lived in Barclay East. We were there for a number of years. 
in the ministry, but uh, when in 1994, um, when things were changing in the country, uh, we, we decided that the uh, local Model C schools were dragging their heels in letting people into the schools and so on. And we decided at that stage uh, to start a private school. And we used a, a curriculum called Accelerated Christian Education, which is based on the Montessori system, where each child learns at their own pace. And um, this helped those who were not on track education-wise to sort of catch up with those who were on track um, without uh, retarding their progress. So it was a, it was a fantastic experience, actually. We, um, we started the school, it was, uh, you know, with seven children. My two children were two of the seven. And um, and we had let it be known out there in the community that we would offer boarding school uh, facilities. And this caused our school to mushroom from seven children to 140 in one and a half years. And uh, and, you know, eventually we had to move premises and we we uh, bought the local hotel and turned it in. There were two hotels, uh, the one. Um, we bought the local hotel, turned it into a hostel for our children. And so it was exceptionally busy time of our lives. And uh, it was quite incredible. Actually, we eventually were paying 44 uh, people, employed 44, you know, teaching staff and hostel staff and, and everything like that. And uh, and anyway, we, we, we got so busy that we decided to go full time into the school and handed the pastoring side over to somebody else. But what happened was when my uh, children reached senior school level. Now, I just want to say at this point that I, I just basically got a matric, that's all. Um, uh, and uh, so I didn't go to university or anything like that. Uh, when we, you know, we employed school teachers, obviously, for our school, but uh, we were running the school as a business. But uh, when my children reached senior school level, we were faced with a dilemma our school had not become a senior school or fully become a senior school yet. And we didn't want to send our children away to boarding school. So we decided to actually hand the school over to somebody who was competent to running it and decided to move to East London, which for us was the big city. Now, um, <clears throat> upon arrival in East London, um, I was approached to start another school, but I decided against it. Um, and, um, you know, I uh, I investigated a, a handful of business opportunities, uh, including uh, network marketing, but never really found anything that I, I felt I could be passionate about. And it was during my early years um, that, yeah, it was during my early years um, uh, that in East London, that a, a business acquaintance, as you said earlier on, Hussein, I, I, I was contacted by a business acquaintance who said to me, you know, you've always taught different things to different people. Why don't you teach them how to trade on the stock exchange? I said, but I know nothing about the stock exchange except for what I hear on the, on the news and so on. And in fact, when those numbers scroll underneath the news there, it means absolutely nothing to me. And um, and it's normally when they say, let's see what the markets are doing, then it's my cue to go and make a cup of coffee sort of thing. You know, that's how little I knew about the stock market. But anyway, um, this this guy who said, why don't I teach people how to trade on the stock market? He was he was marketing a, a software package that provided what we call end of day data to all on all companies on the local JSE. Now, as I said, I knew nothing about the stock market, but I needed an income. So I decided to take up the challenge and learn about how it works. And, and basically what I was doing there is I was positioning myself to learn how it works so that I could teach others because teaching and mentoring is an absolute uh, a passion of mine. And so that's when I started our company called Sure Trading. Um, I started it in February 20, 2002. And that was now 20 years and a bit, almost 21 years ago, I started our company in East London. Um, and basically an education company, I realized early in my journey as an educator of people wanting to learn how to trade, that trading actually can be quite a lonely journey. And uh, so I've always been strong on creating a community to try to make students feel that they are part of 
a wider trading community where they can bounce ideas off each other and so on. So when I first started out, uh, you know, we didn't have the fancy uh, trading platforms that we have available to us now. But um, yeah, what happened was my children eventually left and, and uh, my daughter came to university in Cape Town. My son went to Pretoria. And so it was just myself and my wife at home in, in East London. And we decided actually to move to Cape Town, mostly for family reasons, but also because my business is the type that can go anywhere, you know. And uh, so we, we moved to Cape Town. It's now 14 years ago. And, uh, and yeah, I continued meeting with local clients on a weekly basis. Um, at first, we were hiring premises around the city uh, to teach and train our clients. And then we soon in, uh, were soon invited, actually, uh, by um, Velocity Trade, our brokers, to, they invited me, they were opening offices, it's an international company, but they were opening offices in South Africa. And they invited me to um, to use their offices basically to meet with my clients and to hold training sessions there. And that's where I met you, Hussein. Um, I met you there at, at Velocity. Anyway, um, that was about 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, they provide an amazing uh, online training, training platform. Now... <clears throat> Just as a side note, uh, you know, just if you ever embark on trading, just it's very important that you choose a registered broker, not for for the first broker who contacts you on the internet says I can make you rich in no time at all. Don't don't be hoodwinked by by that. Okay, so that's um, a little bit about uh, my my story. And um, now in 2016, I was approached by Penguin Books, and they asked me if I would consider writing a book uh, that would help the ordinary South African benefit from the stock exchange. Now, the book, as you can see there, uh, I think if you can see my screen, How to Make Money on the Stock Exchange, it was launched in 2017. And, uh, you know, as a result of that, um, things really changed in our business in that all of a sudden, um, people outside of Cape Town were reading the book, and uh, and they were finding, uh, you know, they are they were phoning me and wanting to know more and so on. And they joined our business, and that's what caused our uh, our company to basically go online. Our mentoring and training is now um, all online, so it actually doesn't really matter where you are in the world, actually. Um, you can, we can, you know, help you and mentor you and train you. Okay, so, so that's, that's a little bit about myself. And so I'd like to just get into the nitty gritty. And I also would like to uh, really, uh, Hussein, I, I hope you don't mind. But I would like uh, to um, offer to, uh, for people to unmute their mic if they have any questions, or would you prefer it if we have questions afterwards? Okay, yeah, I, I, no, I think um, we can we can have questions afterwards unless this. Um, what do the people feel? Okay. Is there anyone who wants to ask questions now? Uh, I think yeah, we can let's leave it for afterwards. Yeah. Okay. All right. We can set aside. I think yeah, we're so about like half past half past um, seven. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how okay. long you it's still going to be, but as soon as you're done, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, if there are um, questions, just make a note of it somewhere and then you can ask it. OK, so they, let's, can, also, let's, they, sorry, they can also drop in the chat in the meantime and then we can go through it. Yeah, you can drop it in the chat as well. Yes. OK, thank you. All right. So so let's let's have a look now. We, we have a mentorship program and, and the purpose of our training and mentorship pr program, actually, that we have is to provide you. Uh, the person who wants to uh, trade the markets, you know, with all the necessary tools, all the necessary knowledge, all the necessary information that you need, enabling you on a daily basis to make the following um, uh, important decisions. Now, let's think about it. When you want to, uh, when you start with 
with, uh, when, if you've got money to invest, what is the first question that you ask yourself? You say to yourself, where am I going to put this money? Am I going to put it in a savings account? Am I going to put it on the stock market? Am I going to buy property with it? Am I going to put it in my bond? Or am I going to put it on a fixed deposit? So that's that's basically what we want to do. As far as the, the stock market is concerned, we want to help you to find um, a, a starting point. What is it? Where do I, I, I put my money? So that's the first question I want to help you to answer with your own money. Then the second question I want to help you to answer with your own money is which direction to trade the market. Now, this might um, uh, confuse you a little bit um, in that we all know that you can make money if the market goes up. But, you know, you've been hearing lately a lot uh, people saying, oh, man, the market's just diving and tanking and, uh, and uh, you know, things are going badly. There's a recession and things like that. But I can teach you how to make money when the market's going up. And I can teach you how to make money when the market is going down. And uh, so, so that is um, uh, important. Um, okay. Now, that's so... Which direction do I trade the market? Do I trade it upwards or downwards? And then the third question I want to help you to uh, to to do is get your timing right. When is the right time to enter the market? Um, you know, if you enter the market, you're entering at the right price, the right time, and that's how you can make money. And then the other um, question, the last one, is when to exit the trade, when to exit the market. So those are the four questions that I want to position you on a daily basis to be able to make a decision about. Um, and then all of this without you losing focus on or having to take time out of your main income generating activities. I call it an end of day strategy. Okay, that's now, now when I say end of day strategy, uh, it's also called swing trading or position trading. Basically, end of day trading is a way to trade effectively in a way that will not interrupt your eight to five working day. My assumption is always when a person starts trading, and it's very important when you start learning how to trade, it's, in, it's in, extremely important that while you're learning how to trade, that you have another form of income. Because this is the biggest mistake that people make when they start the journey of trading. They, they feel that if they've got some money, they can put it on the market and within uh, a short period of time, they're going to have a whole lot of uh, money. It just simply doesn't work this way. And when you're beginning, what you know, if you don't have another form of income, then you are going to say, you're going to say in your mind, okay, I need to make a thousand rand today because if I don't make a thousand rand today, uh, I'm not going to have money to to uh, buy groceries for the children. And um, and that is a very dangerous thing for the beginner. In other words, you are trading because of your need. And uh, it's 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 so, uh, you know, it, it, it's so dangerous. Um, chase the money and you will find out that money always runs faster than you. What you need to do, uh, not only while you're learning, but always is to chase the process. In other words, chase the process of getting it right rather than trying to chase the money. Chase the process and you will find that the money will actually automatically follow you. So that is very, very Im important. We start you off by teaching you the types of trading that won't affect your day job. But at the same time, you might find that a bit slow. So we also immediately start the process of teaching you more active uh, ways of trading as well. You know, the, the type of trading that produces a bit of adrenaline. Okay, so so that's what we, we do. So um, initially, I want to teach you how to trade uh, in a way that doesn't affect your normal eight to five job. Um, Okay, if you don't have an income, you can learn how to trade, but uh, but I, I really encourage people to find another form of income uh, so that, yeah, um, yeah, so that uh, so that you 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 know you 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 you're trading to get it right. 
and and I would say don't expect to make money in your first year. Now that that uh, you say, well, I get into this to to make money. Yeah, well, yes, you do, and we all do. But actually, get into it to get it right, because once you've got it right, you are positioning yourself to be able to create an income for yourself for the rest of your life. Okay, so that's uh, we start that off now. Now traders generally fall into five. Uh, one of five categories or a combination of these. But you get the scalp trader, for instance. Now, a scalp trader, they are trading very, very actively in market. And they, they hold a trade for seconds to minutes. And they don't, they put money into the market in, in, in the morning. And, and uh, uh, within, within a couple of seconds or minutes, they're out of that trade and they're trading. They can sometimes trade a hundred times a day or even more times per day. I remember uh, one uh, sc uh, scalper, a uh, young guy, man, I don't know if you guys remember that. Well, uh, maybe you're a lot younger than I am, but there used to be a game called Space Invaders and uh, and you would, you would uh, press on the keyboard. This guy, when he was trading, sounded as if he was, um, playing Space Invaders. And uh, it was quite amazing. But uh, there were times when he would throw the mouse against the wall and, uh, you know, that type of thing. So you have to, uh, and a scalp trader has to be there focused while they're in a trade. And then, um, then you also get another category called the day trader, or I can call them an intraday trader. Now, that is a person who holds a position um, oh dear, sorry, let me just uh, log in there to my platform again. Um, and I'll minimize that so you can see the screen again. I'll be getting to my trading platform soon. Okay, uh, yeah, the day trader. Uh, in fact, I'm busy with a day trade at the moment, and I'll show you a little bit later on. Uh, but the day trader, uh, he positions himself or he or she positions themselves uh, to hold trades for minutes to hours. OK, and then you've got another type of trader called the momentum trader. They are in positions. Now, when I say they are in a position, it basically makes, may, means that they've put some money into a particular trade. And, uh, and they hold that trade, the, the trade stays open for several hours and sometimes up to several days. And then you've got a swing trader from days to weeks, they, they keep them open. And then you've got a position trader, uh, which is um, where you hold positions for uh, from months to years. Now, the, the type of trading that I call end of day trader trading is basically this, uh, um, this one called momentum trader. You know, that's where they hold positions uh, from several hours to several days. And um, that's that's what I call an end of day also. Um, OK, so those are um, the the categories that traders fall under. And, you know, you would be able to choose which which suits your lifestyle, which suits your your desire. OK, now we teach two types or two categories of trading. And the first one is what we call equities trading. Now, when, when you um, look at equities trading, an equity is a share. So it's like buying and selling shares um, or ETFs. Now, an exchange traded fund is actually a, um, is, is, is a whole lot of shares. You know, if you're buying a share, you can buy a share in, in Capitech, you can buy shares in, in, in ShopRite, you can buy shares in, in all of those different companies. But if you trade an exchange traded fund, is you become part owner of a number of companies. So if you buy shares or equities, you become part owner of a company. If you trade an ETF or buy an ETF, an ETF is basically a whole group of shares that are put into one basket. And so you, you trade, uh, you know, a small amount of Capitec, a small amount of maybe, maybe the top 40. Uh, there's a thing, called, an ETF called Satrix 40, which where you would be basically putting money on a monthly basis, or you would be trading it actively where you would be 
trading and it would be a shareholding in 40 different companies all in one go. Now, if you are um, buying and selling of shares, you basically, the market has to go up. The share price has to go up for you to make money. If the share price goes down, you are actually losing money. You're not, in fact, losing money while you're holding it. Obviously, you are losing money if it goes down and you sell it. But of course, if you're looking at the longer term perspective, which is what you would be doing this with, you could wait for it to go up over a period of time. Okay, so that's the first category of trading that we teach. And then the second is what we call derivatives trading. Now, derivatives trading, I was introduced to derivatives trading. We, we call them CFDs, um, uh, contracts for difference. I just want to find out, is there anybody here who's, who has never heard of CFDs, contracts for difference? Why don't you just uh, type in there? Anybody, let's let's put it this way. Who has heard about CFD? Simone, okay, uh, yeah, I'm making a confusion here. You haven't heard, okay. Anybody else heard of CFDs? Anybody? Nobody. Okay, you've never heard of CFDs? Z, okay. All right. Um, I was introduced to CFDs, and I'm going to explain CFDs in a, in a, in a moment. I was introduced to CFDs or derivatives trading in 2006 by an ex-policeman who had turned 10,000 rand into 1 million rand in 18 months. And I mean, this ex-policeman, this impressed me greatly, I must say. I mean, it was, it was then that I was introduced to the, for the first time also to online trading platforms. But this guy, he was in the dog unit in, in Durban, and his, his uh, wife was also in the dog unit. And it was actually quite interesting. His wife's dog was killed in a skirmish, and she just said, I'm out of here. I, I don't want to carry on in the police anymore. And he actually also resigned a little bit later. And he, he had heard about CFD trading, and he put 10,000 Rand into his CFD account. And as I said, Within 18 months, it was over a million rand. But I, I just want to have a basically a, a bit of a disclaimer here. It was at a time when the markets were literally in such what we call a bull market. The market was just going up so hectically that you could literally throw money at the market and it would come back a hundredfold. But I was introduced to derivatives. Now, now, what is the word derivative? What, what does it mean? Well, it's it comes from the word derive or get from and um and i will ex as we go i'll explain it a little bit more now there are a number of ways you can uh trade derivatives uh CFDs, Forex CFDs, crypto CFDs. Now, what is what is a CFD? I'm going to explain that just now. But basically, these are derivatives. You are trading on the share price, the commodity price, without owning the Uh, you know, you can buy and sell gold and, uh, you know, there are people that are out there and they're buying and selling pieces of gold. You can uh, buy the Kruger Rand, for instance, and so on and so forth. That's a physical commodity. Now, with the futures market or the derivatives market, it's opened up the door of possibility for so many people in that if you trade gold, you don't have to move pieces of gold. You can trade on the gold price. You can trade on the oil price without moving barrels of oil. And so this has opened the door to so much opportunity for people to trade a derivative. And a derivative is called a CFD. And 
And um, yeah, so you're trading on the commodity price, the, the, the share price, the gold price, the oil price, without owning the physical share or commodity. Now, why do people trade the derivative? Well, because there are two major advantages of trading a derivative. The first one is this. If you trade the derivative, you can earn income in both upward and downward trending markets. So, so this basically doubles your opportunity to make money. I can trade the market downwards and I can trade the market upwards. And so now you can't do that if you're buying shares of a company. You can make money when the market goes up, but not when it's going down. If you buy uh, pieces of gold or, or you know physical gold, you can only make money if you sell it for a higher price than you bought it. But if you're trading the derivative, you can trade it both upwards and downwards. And then also another uh, difference between normal shares and derivatives is, the, is with derivatives, they are geared or leveraged products. Now, you know, to, to most people and, and to myself included, it was a very confusing thing. How can I make money if the share price is going down? Well, I'm hopefully going to explain that in a way that's going to help you to be able to understand that. And then uh, I'm going to go into leveraging as well. So now let's look at um, share CFDs. You can buy and sell shares. It's exactly the same as buying and selling of shares, except in the case of CFDs, uh, you are trading on the share price without owning the share. And that brings about those two things that make them so attractive. You know that CFD trading is very, very popular. In fact, CFD trading is responsible for more than 50% of the trades that are done on the London Stock Exchange. It is very popular. And, um, and so, so it's, you know, here in South Africa, it's probably also around about 50% of the trades that are done on the London Stock Exchange. Now, when I started out, I said to the guy that introduced me, the, this ex-policeman, I said to him, but now how come it, it's a, um, how come it's listed on the stock market? How, how come the turnover happens on the stock market when I don't own the share? And he said, well, somebody does. And so it's a legitimate transaction that happens on the market. So let me just go through the other ones quickly. These are all available for you to trade uh, if you trade, you know, if you join us and so on. Uh, the commodity CFDs. Now, what is a commodity? Well, it's it's a raw material. It's like gold. It's platinum. It's coffee. It's oil. Corn. You can trade all of those commodities as well uh, with us. And then one of the most popular ones is what we call an index CFD. An index CFD is um, is basically where you are trading a basket of shares. You've probably heard of the Aussie or the Top 40 Index. Basically, it is where they put those 40 top companies on the South African market. They put them together in a basket, and you can basically trade the basket. Okay, and um, and so so people you know feel that that's uh, that's a little bit safer than trading an individual company. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the Aussie, you've probably heard also of the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones is simply a basket of the top 30 companies on the U.S. market. And then you've got the S&P 500, or we call it the U.S. 500. That's the top 500 companies that are on the U.S. markets. And the FTSE, which is the London Stock Exchange, it's the top 100 companies on the London Stock Exchange. The, the DAX is the... Uh, uh, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. So, so you can now. I'm, you know, I'm hoping I'm not sort of uh, going past you, but I just want you to understand the amazing, uh, you know, the 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 choices you have. Uh, we we filter it down to just a handful of of uh, different trades. Otherwise, it just gets con confusing. But you need to know what is available. And then, of course, you've all heard of Forex trading. Uh, we teach you. Now, people phone me sometimes and they say, do, you, do I teach people how to trade Forex? And I say to them, actually, I teach them how to trade. Once you know how to trade, you can literally trade anything because you use the same strategies 
whatever you're trading. And I'll show you just now. So Forex, um, you, you're trading one currency against another. And um, so, so um, they're all the different uh, currency pairs. And so like, for instance, the, that top one, if you believe that the dollar is going to strengthen against the rand, you would trade it in a certain way. If you believe that the rand is going to strengthen against the dollar, you would trade it uh, a certain way. But that sounds very complicated. Um, it's actually very, it's not totally simple, but it's not complicated. Uh, because basically, whatever you are trading, you are trading a chart, you are trading a graph. And that's what we teach you to do. And then also, you can trade a number of uh, cryptocurrencies as well, but you can only trade them as derivatives. So you don't buy them per se uh, and, and hold them like you do through a, a platform like Luna. Or you, but you can trade them as a cryptocurrency as as a CFD. So those are all the the um, uh, yeah, those are all the different things that you can trade. And uh, so now let me just ask a question. Um, I have something called EC10. Uh, what is it? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what an EC10 is. Um, but uh, I can I can have a look up. But for, uh, right off my head, I don't know what an EC10 is. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, ask your dad, uh, Simone. Uh, it's on Easy Equities. Oh, okay. So it might be one of theirs. Uh, all right. Okay. So then, um, what I want to do now is just explain a little bit more about contracts for difference or CFDs. Um, as I said, 50% or more of the London Stock Exchange is traded this way. And this is what I teach my uh, students and my clients uh, to trade. Now, what is a contract? We all know what a contract is. It's an agreement between two parties. In this case, it's an agreement between the broker and yourself. Okay, so it's a contract between yourself and the broker. What is the contract for? Well, that's where the for the difference for difference comes in. It's a contract for the difference between your entry price into the market and your exit price out of the market. So it's, it's just the same as anything, really. Um, you know, if you've got a sweet shop, you enter the market by buying those sweets at a lower price and you exit the, the market by selling those sweets at a higher price. So the contracts for difference is exactly the same. If you buy shares, you buy low, sell high. So it's exactly the same, but you're trading the derivative. So it's an agreement between yourself and the broker who's offering the product. Now, we use a broker called Velocity Trade, who, as I said earlier on, has been around for a number of years. I, uh, I don't, I'm not employed by them, but they use people like me to train people and teach people how to trade. And uh, so, so they offer a trading platform and they are basically an intermediary and when you uh, i just want to uh, just uh, say this when you uh, put money into your trading account okay uh, simone is saying it's some crypto thing yeah okay <laughs> um if if you open a trading account through us Basically, what happens is the the money that you put into your trading account is is put into what we call a uh, segregated account in NedBank. Now, NedBank uh, is our liquidity provider, so you don't open an account with NedBank per se. But I'm just saying that your trading account, the money goes into a segregated account in NedBank, which basically means that it's as safe as if you've got your money in a savings account. Velocity trade, the broker cannot use your trading money to get their business out of trouble. Uh, and this can be, uh, you know, you you get introduced to brokers that are in, in the US and, and so on and so forth, and uh, your money just disappears. And so it's just very important to know that uh, your money is absolutely safe. If you want an international account, we obviously can organize that as well. But uh, yeah, so contract for difference, a contract is an agreement between two parties, in this case, between you and the broker who's offering the product, 
and it's for the difference between your entry price into the market and your exit price out of the market. Now, it's it's like if you if you look at this chart, the idea if you entered the market by buying uh, shares at 100 rand a share, and you exited the market by selling those shares at 120 rand a share, um, you, the difference between your entry price of 100 rand and your exit price of 120 rand is 20 rand per share. Um, obviously, minus costs. It's called a long position. It's got nothing to do with time length. It's to do with the fact that you're trading the market upwards. So, I mean, that's very easy to understand whether you are buying the actual share or whether you are buying or uh, trading the CFD. You would press the buy button to buy and it would buy those shares and you would press the sell button to get out or your profit level would be. Uh, where it sells for you if you've automated that process, which we also teach you as well. And uh, or else if it goes out at your what we call a stop loss, then then you've lost on the trade, but you've at least limited your losses. And so that's easy to understand a long position. But what about how does it work if I want to um, trade the market downwards, if I believe the market is going to go down? Okay, so what I would do is I would, if, if I believed the market was going down and I was trading a CFD, I would press the sell button on my platform to enter my position. So I would sell and then hopefully it goes down and then I will buy back later at a lower price. And, um, you know, when, when this ex-policeman explained this to me, I said, I sort of sort of get it, but I don't really. You know, it's such a foreign, uh, com, uh, you know, thing to me to make money when, when the share price is going down. So what, uh, what he did was he gave me an explanation. And uh, it really just helped me uh, to, um, to understand it. Let's say you want to, you, uh, want to short Anglo-American. You believe that the share price of Anglo-American is going to go down. And so, so what you do is, now this is not how it actually happens. This is just an illustration. So what you do is you go to Anglo-American, you say, I want to borrow some shares. So they lend you some shares. They say to you, uh, just bring them back when you finish. So they don't talk, talk price. They don't talk uh, time period. They don't give you a limit on time. They just say, when you finish with those shares, bring them back. So you take those borrowed shares and you sell them into the market. So how much did you get for, the, for that sale? Well, you got 100 Rand a share. So now you've got the 100 Rand per share in your pocket and your shares are in the market. Now the share price on the market goes down, 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 down to 80 Rand. And then you decide, okay, I think I'm finished with this trade. So what you do is you go you take the 100 Rand that you got for the shares that you sold. You got the 100 Rand in your pocket. You go to the market and you buy those same shares back. But this time, they're not 100 Rand. They're only 80 Rand. So you are still sitting with 20 Rand per share in your pocket. And that's how you can make money out of a falling share price. Okay, so you would, you would basically, what happens is, when you press the sell button on your platform, Nedbank actually lends you those shares to sell into the market. So, so Nedbank has got shares in their holding that they will sell into the market. And when you press the button to buy those shares back, then Nedbank buys those shares back. So it's a legitimate transaction market. They are just allowing you to trade on the price of the shares without owning the shares. So you take the risk of the difference between your entry price and your stop loss price. And, um, and that's, that's how it, uh, it, it works.